guys and welcome to today's video. So we are off with Kate in the back there on her phone. Of course I'm on my phone. <laughs> we are off with Kate to riding lessons. So this is the coach that she's working with, the eventer. He's working with Kate and Stevie right now and he is working on jumping. So we did do the first lesson. You've only done one lesson so far, I think, right, with him? Yep. Yeah, so we did one lesson at... It was a snow day. Oh. Right. So we've done one lesson with him so far. We've had some storms coming through, so the one lesson got canceled because we weren't able to drive up. He did one lesson in the barn that she does dressage at, but he only comes down a handful of times throughout the winter to do lessons here. And the rest, if we want to continue lessons, we have to go to his place, which is a bit of a drive for us. Through the winter, we're going to be doing every other week because the stretch of road that we have to drive is also not the greatest in the winter. Come nicer weather and in the summer, ideally we're able to get out more often. I've seen your comments. I know I've been really bad about going and commenting. Things have just been super busy. Going through all the comments and commenting back takes a while. I just haven't had a chance to do that because we've had a lot going on right now. But I'm reading them and I love your comments. I love seeing them. So please keep writing and I'm taking it all in. I'm going to try and get back to commenting back to you guys. But I'm seeing it all and we absolutely love seeing your comments. So please keep commenting. But I did see, I know the lessons for dressage and for jumping are really hard to hear. The problem is, is wireless microphones, I've looked into them, but they cost a lot of money, unfortunately. The ones that we need, we need ones that have a far distance that it can carry. And most of them I think are around the 65 foot mark and it's just not going to pick up anything that they're saying because we're further away. The barns are large. And so what we're doing this time is I've attached a GoPro to Kate's helmet. So we got a new GoPro that I'm trying out for lessons. I didn't know how that's gonna work. And also just so we can do for trails and all of that, but. And cross country. Oh, Kate wants to. <laughs> Kate is really looking forward to warmer weather because she really wants to do cross-country courses. I was supposed to go this summer You with might Stevie. get converted to an eventer. I was supposed to go this summer with <laughs> Stevie, but we never had the chance to like get to a cross-country course. Like I know, it, this summer got away from us. It just, it really got away from us. So Kate is- And it was hot whenever we would have done. Yeah, with the weather. So Kate is dying to get on a cross country course. So he has a big cross country course at Hans his place. Everything. Because he- uh, He's an event. Some of the, is it some of the rated shows are held there or? Yeah. Anyway, bottom line is in the warmer weather, we're gonna probably get there, but I'm gonna see, I'm hoping that the video works out good, but even if the video doesn't work out, because I'm not sure if I've got this positioned properly and we're just testing it out this time, but um, I'm hoping I can at least maybe take the audio from the GoPro because it'll be closer to the coach. So fingers crossed. I'm trying to fix this audio situation for you guys. As soon as our channel grows a little bit and we're making some money, right now, the money that we're making on YouTube doesn't even cover the expenses <laughs> that it costs us to do the to the do the YouTube between all of the equipment and the programs that I need for editing and for the music and stuff like that. So that's on our list once we grow a little bit and we're making some money and I've got some different plans in the works for trying to generate some income so I can get that set up for you guys. But until then, we're gonna hope that this GoPro works for the audio. All right, we are almost there, so I will catch you when we're at the barn. Before we get into the video, go ahead and click the subscribe button and hit the bell to select all so you don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and tell your friends and family about us too. It's the only way we can grow and that YouTube knows you're enjoying our videos. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well for extra content and behind the scenes footage. Let's get into the video. Ready to go. That's good. Let's circle up here. Yeah. 
her feel it. She can bring her shoulder up. She can bring her chest up. She can come up to you. All right, let's take her right around the room. Keeping your inside leg right to that first. Come to have a little more. Push her into that corner. Just to bend more to the rib cage. She has to give you that inside hind leg. And you can flex her a little more to the right. So that flex, we'll talk about flex, we'll talk about the horse's front end, the neck, the jaw, the jaw. Then we're going to turn more to the rib cage to her body. We're going to circle here again. Again, ask her for a bit more bend. She's so ripped her from the inside leg. So she steps underneath herself a bit more with the inside hind leg. And we'll just ask her for a bit of flex. She asks her a little bit to the inside. She softens her jaw to her neck. There you go. And then she can serve the temperature. Alright, wherever works, you can find a quick change in direction, work our way around the ring, and again, we'll come back up here. Okay, so you're going to start by the arm around. Wrap the lower leg around. Go ahead here. If you don't rise, you push her in the rhythm. Yeah, that's what we need. Good. Push her a bit longer. So. Good. She's still not quite tracking up. I'd like to see another three or four inches in that stride. Good. All right, next time around, just to sort of see where that steps at, let's go through those three prop holes. Make sure she's quite straight from that corner, the outside leg turns, the inside hand just stays up, and then ride forward. Good. Come back to those again. Okay. Again, making sure that the side leg is forward.
to be fairly assertive. I actually want to get that at once, but like I've got a better way. I can do this now. Here you go. And you got the lead chain, front and back. Let her drop when you're ready. Now she can walk and think about that for a minute. This time to have enough energy coming off that turn, she can give it a good effort. And you got a lovely change. But you don't slow her down. You can change that foot from you bring her back to you, get her balance up behind. Then she can come out of that corner with a lot of balance and strength with her legs, then you can move forward with the fence. If you just think you're kind of slow down to get to it, you lose too much of the impulsion of the tanner. If you come out of the turn, then you just And you get a fairly small jump, but if that's much bigger, you kind of want to have that tanner in to have enough work with it. Why don't we change direction? We'll start with her stronger lead, make it a bit easier for her. Alright, left hand on. That's better. Circle again, I want to get some continuity in that canner. And then we're going to go down that inside line. Two strides, two strides. When you come out of that corner, you look to the first, you look to the very last step, don't worry too much about the middle element. It's just a product of a nice straightforward canner. Get in line. Come on now. She tried it in, right? She had no luck to get the out. Come back to that forward canner down the long side. And no different from the short turn on the other end. She's going to sit up, she's going to really balance on the hind legs coming out of the corner. You're going to have to work awfully hard on that outside leg already from here to get the canter after you do the turn. Good, that's better. Good, call it, pull it. Come on up. Good, there's the canter lead. Let's do that again. I don't mind so much if she walks the lead down the line, but I really like to get the lead back on the out. When you get to that last jump, you're looking right, you're opening the right rein.
how much work it will take to get the, the flying changes because she's just yeah. not really in, like I don't think I've seen her at first she would normally be, right? Yeah. Uh, the flying change in the canner, basically a canner transition with the canner itself, right? You go yeah. going like that from off the ground, you swap the legs, you swap the lead. A prerequisite to getting that flying change is having a really good balance for the camera. Right? And again, I think that there is a Uh, but again, every chance you get to ride, the more work you can get in that canter, having lots of jump. And I'll be on the roof, like even today, I'll give you a little more. Because again, I want her to be able to do more, you to be able to do more things with that canter. If it's got a bit more impulsion, if it's got a little more jump, if it's got a little more energy, you'll be in a position where you can start to consider getting a change, or you're much more likely to get a change over jump. Yeah. This comes into it, and she. Fought just to have to do the job, there's not much left in reserve. She's not like the video. She's got a really tiny jump, though. Like, yeah. she tries her. Yeah. All right, let's come back to these three prop holes again. The prop holes, again, a simple exercise. They're a really good indicator of where that rhythm is at, where that fall in strike at. You want to come back to them, the horse has to stay quite straight through them. What's that left leg? Oh, left shoulder. I don't know if we are right to the middle of that first hole. We need to really be supporting with that outside leg coming out of the corner. Already now you're looking at the first pull and the last. Don't worry about the middle of the leg. Well, that was straighter that time. I'll throw a couple on the end. Because she likes to drop that left shoulder, right? It tells you the end. But it's fair, she's tired. She wants to drop that left shoulder anyway. Got to really catch it now. Push her shoulder my way. Left leg, a little nudge, a little nudge, a little nudge. Good, now stop your hand with bigger hips. Good, change direction. We'll come back to that on the other ring. More step if you can. Keep right. those hands up that remain. So you just stretch out as tall as you can. It's out. Good, look at the first set of five on the left. Just need to hold that straight line in between. It's always the one on the outside that gets knocked. And it's typically on the end, not the end. Right? The horse always wants to drop the shoulder to the turn. Be quite assertive with that outside leg. Good. That's better. Good. Okay, go ahead and pick up the left hand. Hand up. Good. Hand on. We're going to go around those, go outside those. Those are when we set the rock. We're going to go pop over the pink vertical, get our change in direction, come back to the green vertical. And stay up. Hip your lower back, send the arm. Your leg sends the arm. Try not to rock your shoulder. Okay. Scan really, give her top, get her under way. Come back to the green. And again, three of you be riding forward to the screen jump. For us to get the lead change, she has to have a lot of jump in that step. Scan really, give her top. We're going to come back and let her do the outside line. And stay up. Back to the outside line. Still step a little bigger. Again, it's all looking in a good corner though. You're looking to the out. As soon as you get to that corner, you're looking to the last jump. And then really ride up to that first fence. You can still make it two, but don't. Lost the impulsion. Forward again. <laughs> it happens, right? When you can't get to the end of your jump or to the horseshoe. It's fair for the horse to work around 40 minutes. I think she can do that. But she needs to give us a really good effort there. Eyes up. Yeah, good. Better. Now forward, keep the stride working. Good. And then cross. It's quite common for the horse to swap at the out when they give it a good effort. Right? I think if she, she was a little fitter and she had a little more energy, she probably wouldn't swap on the last jump. I don't worry about it too much, in all honesty, though, at this stage. Uh, once we start to get a lead change on the horse and we get enough balance in the canter, we can do that. It's not really a big deal. And to me, the straightness is much more important than keeping the lead. We can probably keep the lead by really opening the rein and you know twisting a bit to the inside and all those things. And yeah, we'll probably keep the lead, but we're going to lose a lot of the quality of the jump. We're going to lose the quality of the line. We're going to lose quality in the game. So the straightness and the quality of the canter is more important. Then you can come back and get the lead after that. And once you have a slime change, it's really not a big deal, right? You land, you get a strike, so you get your change to carry on. Right? It's a simple thing, but the straightness is more important, even if you get a swap.
Let her change direction again. We'll pick her up in the right brain. We still have to really work in that walk. Let's sit down. Good. All right. Let's trot her on the circle up in the center. Can't stay up. After one, she doesn't go right away. Give her time. Good. Circle up here. Come back to that walk when you're ready, and then just right back to the trot. We should only really need to ask her once. If she doesn't go right away off her legs, she gets tapped right away. And trot up. Okay, and then do it again. Back to your walk. Whether you intend to or not, you're always training your horse. When you ask her for something, she needs to understand you mean it. Every single time. Back to your walk. Ask her to trot again. That was better. Because if she thinks it's okay to ignore your leg for that transition, it's probably going to be okay to ignore your leg coming into the jump. That's fair. Not that we want her to do that. So we make sure we're careful in all of our work. Let's go all the way around the ring. When you're sort of clip close to this corner, we're going to put her into the canter. We're going to go back to those great jumps. Ask her for a little more. Good. That's good, guys. Let's go down that line. Careful that they're not too tired that it's still a fair ask. But if it's a fair ask, you follow first. 